I'm Ben Fogel, and I'm about to set sail to live the life of a North Sea fisherman. But this will be no free ride. I'm here to take on this most dangerous of jobs. You know, if you're working in the ocean, that's just, that is how cool it is. Hauling thousands of fish from the sea and working without rest for up to 24 hours at a time. The thing I'm starting to realise is there's absolutely nowhere to escape on board. I've been on some big adventures, but I've got a feeling nothing could prepare me for how tough this is going to be. Setting sail on three very different boats. I want to find out just what draws these men back to the sea day after day, each time putting their lives on the line. Can you get it over there, mate? From the camaraderie of the trawlermen. Uh, it's better than sitting in an office all day, though, you know? Sending emails back and forth to your pals. To the crew of the prawn boats, hunting their elusive prey. Yeah, it looks a bit heavy. Maybe, maybe not. And the loneliness of the crab fishermen. You're missing a finger. Welcome to the North Sea. Oh. I get the feeling it's going to be one hell of a ride. The rugged northeast coast of Scotland. For centuries, fishermen have sailed out of the ports and harbours clinging onto this remote corner of Britain. Yeah, this is where it all happens, the North Sea. But coming up here in January, so what am I thinking? <laughs> the only way to describe what I'm seeing now is it just looks ominous. It just looks bleak and miserable out there. Huge waves just crashing next to that lighthouse over there. I've taken on some real challenges in the past, rowing the Atlantic, crossing the Arabian Desert. But this is going to be a completely different task. Over the last 15 years, over 250 British fishermen have lost their lives at sea, making it one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Turning back now. Britain once had one of the world's biggest fishing fleets. A century ago, there were over 100,000 fishermen. What's left today are just 12,000 men and a handful of specialised fishing ports that ship our fish to markets around the world. My journey starts here at the largest fishing port in Britain. Peterhead. Over a million boxes of fish passed through here in the last 12 months. And this is the vessel I'm due to be sleeping, fishing and working on for the next seven days. The Rose Bloom. A 24-metre trawler with a crew on the hunt for North Sea haddock and cod. Sandy? The skipper of the boat is Sandy McClemon. Hey. You'll be Ben here. Yeah? I'm, I'm Ben. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you as well. Come, I, aboard, come, aye. come aboard, Come aboard. This is bigger than I imagined. It's probably bigger than what you rode across the Atlantic. I in. tell you. But it'll, uh, it'll move just the same, I'm afraid. Can you show me around the rest of the boat? Yeah. Well, Introduce me to the crew. Not much space down here. And Sandy's got a welcome pack waiting for me in the cabin that I'll be sharing with three other crew members. Is this all my gear? This is your gear, so we're hoping that you're going to... Uh, it looks very new. It's still packaged. We're hoping you're going to oh, need... Oh, no, I'm not... I... You're going to need this more than what you need this. Yeah. Because if you're in these, then I'm doing my job. If you're in here, I'm not doing my job very well. This is going to be hard work, isn't it? I hope so. I hope so. It's 3.30 in the afternoon and almost time to set sail. Like many fishing boats in Scotland, this is a family operation, and Sandy's mum's here to say farewell. Let her, let her go, Mike. Thank you very much. 
Nearly 500 boats used to land their catch in Peterhead. Now we're one of just 80. We're heading 12 hours into the North Sea. And alongside us will be our sister ship, Boy John. Working together, these two boats will hunt for fish, pulling a net between them through the water. To pay the fuel and other running costs of the boats, we need to land at least 900 boxes of fish between us. I feel a bit like the first day at school. I haven't really got a clue what's going on. If I put my hand in there, I'd go straight over. A bit out of my depth, if I'm to be honest. I wanted to find out why my skip has chosen this life, despite the obvious dangers. Was I? It must have been. Sandy's must career as a fisherman began at just 16 on his father's fishing trawler, the Heather Bloom. It was built in 1992, and then, uh, sadly, tragically, it was uh, it was lost in 1994. Poor night away there, and we can step on a on an obstruction on the seabed, and the the waves just swamp the swamp the trawler from the stern. All the crew of the Heather Bloom found themselves fighting for their lives. There was six of us there, and five of us were saved. And but my father, he was sadly lost. So. It was all over so fast before we even realised there was there was anything gone wrong. You know, it happened so fast. I just really rocked our whole world. You know, that was our family unit was destroyed. It was just it was just devastation really fast. Tell me to stop if I'm I'm being too prizing, but do, if I'm being too prime, but do, do you not resent the ocean for that for taking your father? That's how cruel the ocean is. You know, if you're working in the ocean, that's just. That is how cruel it is. Just a few hours into life on board the Rose Bloom, and I'm trying to get some sleep. So I do feel a bit apprehensive. I'm glad I'm on board now, but I've still got the unknown. Yeah, I will try and sleep. I feel a long way from home here. And we are. 150 nautical miles, to be exact, off the coast of Scotland, closer to Norway than we are to London. These are the fishing grounds selected by our skipper, and it's time to deploy our nets for the first time on this trip. I was in my bed about five minutes ago. I'm now out on the deck in the middle of the North Sea with cranes and wheels and pumps and nets and smells and wind and seasickness, it's all, it's all completely overwhelming, if I'm to be honest. I can see how over 200 British fishermen a year are injured doing their job. I'm still getting used to the dangers when there's an emergency that seems to worry even these experienced fishermen. Stuck on the bottom. Yeah, I'm biking like they're not ready, so if a join comes out here, we can put that rope onto that side of the net, Ram. It's like a giant anchor. And I don't really understand what's going on. Everyone seems to be rushing around, but we are stuck. We, we, we can't go anywhere. We can't chop it. This is slowing the whole thing. Do not speed it up. See how quickly things can go wrong. So we don't just risk losing the fish, but the net, and worst case scenario, the boat. The whole crew of both boats have to work together to free the net. 
The first drama of this voyage showed me how quickly things can go wrong out here. So we've come out of this OK, compared to what could have happened. Oh, I, I... But in a matter of minutes, the atmosphere on the boat swings from fear to jubilation. Ben, what can I fish us up? Cod. Rock on, Tommy. Good cod, yeah? You happy? Happy, Skip? Oh, I am now, eh? Can we have got any more? Up the Jilson! I estimate a couple of hundred boxes, Captain. Yeah. Not joking, but this is what fishermen waited by all year to see a hole like this. The skipper is literally skipping around the boat. I'm going to be honest, my heart's kind of sinking because that's my evening gone. Pull away, Ben! <sighs> ton after ton of cod, haddock, and the most valuable of all, mugfish. I'll keep us busy for quite a few hours. See the size of monkfish here, look. Huge. Beautiful, eh? It's a fine sight for any fisherman, but now, below deck, the real work begins. The gutting room. Working next to Sandy's brother, Andrew, I'll be processing the thousands of fish we've just brought on board. You'd make a good surgeon, Ben. To keep the fish fresh, we have to gut it while still out at sea. It's a gruesome addition to the job of fishing. Oh, Funny enough, this is the first time no one wanted to do what I was off to do. Are Often we... I get people a bit jealous wanting to come and do the trips I do, but this is, no bad, this is the one unanimously that no one wants to do. Where's the lingo? Uh, it's better than sitting in an office all day, though, you know? Sending emails back and forth to your, uh, your pals. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm fine. Andrew might have a point, but the smell and movement down here is overpowering and making me sick to the stomach. I'm just going to stick my head up some air really quickly. Uh, just to go and see where we are. Just to see where we are. Ah, uh, OK. I'm just going to check the skipper's taking the boat in the right direction. Ah, okay, right, right. <laughs> hey, what are you thinking of the game? I love it. Who? Huey. Huey. It's pretty disgusting, I tell you. The thing I'm starting to realise is there's absolutely nowhere to escape on board. <laughs> it's practically worse out here, but... Whoa. Those guys were saying this beats a nine-to-five office job. At this particular moment, I wouldn't mind being sat behind a computer. Right. Time to go back down below. Right. I know that if I lose too much face in front of these guys, it's game over. OK. I've never done this many fish, you know. No. Very overpowering the smell, is it? You could say that. That last load of fish took hours to gut, and now we're back on deck for the next haul. This cycle will be repeated until the boats are full. This is no nine to five. There's no time for sleep. I was feeling a bit queasy. Well, you know, it's relentless, isn't it? It's not just, uh, this isn't the only time we have to do this. We have to do this for the next week. 
non-stop, pretty much, day and night. I suppose it's too early to say how much use he is at the moment. That's one thing about a fishing boat, there's not much room for passengers, so he's just going to have to get stuck in and get on with it, really. I'm already struggling and only too aware that this is just the start of my North Sea journey. After this, I've got two more testing and very different trips to come. What if I don't deserve this? Do you want to see uh, the power? Look at that. I really don't want to go down there. Two days into my North Sea odyssey, awake and on deck again. With over 30 tons of freshly caught fish in the hold, the skipper's happy, which means our first proper breakfast. Get the good of your black pudding when you're getting a chance. Black pudding. I'll come straight back up. They do lattes. At least you get a latte, that's no problem. <laughs> you heard me. At least you get a latte. <laughs> it's my job aboard here to hear everything that's going on. That's my job. The banter goes on downstairs in the galley, where all the crew take it in turns to cook. I was only 40 when I started this trip, but now uh, I think I'm 45. It's all young. I did think you looked older, Luke. I didn't Still dies his hair now, and look, I caught him in a microwave. Every time he dries, he stands and goes his hair in the microwave. <laughs> Enough of the chat. It's time to get fishing again and make some money. OK, Michael! Come on, you're Come on, you're it looked like a lot of fish to me. They're having a fag. So maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> The crew's wages depend on how much fish is caught and how quickly they can process it. A three-day trip like this could earn them up to a thousand pounds each. That's what you're here for. Empty boxes won't pay the mortgage. Keep it up, keep it up, quick! Up, 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 up. This is an operation geared to make maximum profit. As the new boy, I'm expected to pull my weight and look after the expensive equipment as effectively as the rest of the crew. Oh, you're doing fine, Ben. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. That's all right. Oh! That is exactly the same as you're touching a woman. Just gently, really gently. gently. Jesus, my hydraulics will be in bits. Yeah? That's fine, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> I hasten to point out my wife is nothing like a ten-ton <laughs> reel on a trawler. <laughs> but it needs the same respect. Yeah. The trust is the big thing because you're playing with you're playing with people's lives, with with winches and L lives such. and livelihoods. Check out the last of that big cord. See oh if all stowed joy! Properly. Yes, skipper. Meanwhile, below deck, it's all go in the packing room. This is the bank vault of the boat where the fish is sorted and iced, ready for market. You wouldn't go into a boot shells and buy a steak if you'd watch them kick it about like a football. No. I'm down here with Duncan, who's been working on the boat for the last four years. Do you remember the first time you went to sea? Oh, yes. Really hated it. Hated the thought of it. That's why I don't want my children to do it, and my son. But I'm lucky enough, my, my son's he's a, he's a brainy boy, yeah? See, if he said he really wanted to do this, would you encourage him? No. No, no I would take him away in a very, a very bad week of weather. <laughs> and I would make him work. Every time I was up, he was up, and I would show him how hard and how dangerous this job is. So is this what you want to do for the next 40 years? I can see what he means. A few days is hard enough. Some people are just cut out for a job like this. You coming back next week, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Just 
Just remember, next time you're having a big swanky party down the London, give us a phone. We'll yeah, come yeah, down. I will. We'll show you how to party with. That's one thing we're good at. I bet you are. Same again. Just push the man. Just... We're now 48 hours into the voyage. I'm exhausted, but I feel like I've turned a corner. It's earning my place as one of the team and learning how the crew look out for each other that's made this trip bearable. Do <laughs> 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 you ever have mince and tarties at home? Do hmm? you ever have mince and tarties or mince and rice no, at home? I think that's a Scottish thing. Do you know? No, well, savoury but, mince. Yeah, but you'd probably mix it together and make a cottage pie. If you had, if you had the mince and the potatoes, but not just uh, potatoes like that. No, Am I the first that. Englishman you've had on your on your boat? No. Any other Englishman? No, <coughs> First Englishman I've ever seen, you <laughs> The good news is that this Englishman is heading back to Peterhead early. These boats fish until they're full, so we could have been at sea for anything up to another week. But we've caught so many fish in the past 24 hours that the skipper's about to point our nose back home. Still, turns out there's just about time for one last haul. If he's fishy anyway, I'll give him that. That's as much nice haul as I know as we've seen in a long time. Can I call you a John Yeah, exactly. I think I just received my first compliment of the trip. He said he can't call me a Jonah. A Jonah's supposed to bring bad luck to a trawler. Ben Cod. Is that? Ben Cod. There you go. Skipper's calling me Ben Cod. All right, heave up the ropes. The biggest statement of trust the skipper can put in me is safe till last, when Sandy puts me in charge of steering his million-pound boat back home. I spent the last couple of days feeling continuously nauseous. I'd had a, a secret vomit just before. So I'm now, what is it, 10.30 or so, and we're we're basically racing to get to market. The lights of Peterhead Harbour. Sanctuary, safety, and the promise of a proper bed at last. Definitely found that a tough one. Hard, hard job. But um, I'm sure in a few hours' time I'll I'll look back through rose-tinted glasses. Oh, it's easy. The final job is to unload our hard-earned catch. Between our two boats, there are over 1,300 boxes of fish that we've worked night and day to catch, gut, and ice. If you listen carefully, you can hear a bed in the palace hotel going, Ben, Ben. As it goes to auction, this haul could reach anything between 50 to 80,000 pounds. From here to there, that's it for a day and a half, eh? That's what you've done, Lockwood. And as the buyers mark which boxes they've taken, this fish will be on dinner plates around the country by tomorrow evening. It is nice to see that fish being rewarded for what it's worth, really, you know? Because the, the men went through a lot of work in a short period of time. Uh, the men, uh, me included. The men in Fogel. My time on Rose Bloom has come to an end. But my journey's not over just yet. I've got another type of fishing to experience and another trawler to sail on. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. 
but this time it will be a very different trip.